Then he says, he says, be watchful. Once again, I can't, I can't say this enough, enough times. The church can only reflect the character and commitment of its members. He's not talking about a building. He's not talking about, you know, somehow this building has, you know, it's not what he's referring to. He's talking about quite literally us. What is your character? What is your commitment? He says here is a challenge, a challenge to this dying church. He says, be watchful. They were exhorted to look into their real condition, to look at their self realistically. As I mentioned here, there were two different times in history that this city fell. I mentioned the one and actually told you specifically about the story. There was another time almost exactly like it when it fell once before. Two times. A city that should have never fallen. And it fell. Because they weren't watchful. They weren't careful. When that soldier stood on the wall and dropped his helmet, he shouldn't have been an idiot and went down after it. He shouldn't have let it go. But instead, he wasn't careful. He wasn't watchful. We need to be careful and watchful in our own lives. We need to guard our lives against sin. We need to watch ourselves. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians, actually, it actually it's not in 1 Peter, where he says, Be silver and vigilant, for your adversary the devil is like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. We're told to be sober and to be vigilant. Both ideas. Be watchful. The devil's looking. He's looking to beat you. He's looking to defeat me. He's looking to defeat you. You need to be watchful. He says be watchful, first of all. He says be strengthened. This word actually occurs only here in the book of Revelation. Look at verse 2. It says be watchful and strengthen the things which remain and are ready to die. For I have not uh, found thy works perfect before God. He says to strengthen these things. As I said, this word recurs only here in Revelation. In Paul's writings, it's used six places, six other times. And so that's really where we got to go if we want to find out how to use the word, because in Revelation, it's only used once. In Paul's words, it's used to speak of, <clears throat> to establish something, or to render something stable, to reinforce what is left, to shore it up. I don't know if you've ever saw some of the the buildings, the, the, uh, I think it's Romanesque architecture, I think is what it's called. That uses what they call a flying buttress on the outside of the building. You ever see those things? It's like kind of like a big support that goes up the outside of the building. That really is the idea. To shore it up. To put this flying buttress on there. To put this support on this thing and keep it stabilized. He said they needed to stabilize what was left. They needed to shore it up. They needed to make sure that they took care of their spiritual situation. He said not only they need to be watchful, he said they need to be strengthened. He said they need to remember. Look at verse uh, 3. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast, and repent. If therefore thou shalt, shalt not watch, I will come unto thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come. He says, remember. They need to remember what he tells us in this passage. They needed to remember the, the, they were the, what they first experienced, salvation. They would remember that. They would remember what they had been taught. Not in their head, really, so much, but in their heart. See, it's one thing to know and another to do. There needs to be a constant rehearsal of the basics of the believer's life and duty. We need to remember what God expects of us. And we need to do it. We need to remind ourselves. I can't do that. I'm God's. I can't live like that. He doesn't want me to. You know, there are a lot of things that we could do. But as Paul said, there are a lot of things 
that I can do, but there's a lot of things that are not speedy. There are some things we could do. We could we could be allowed. You know, we are we are allowed to do it. We have a spirit. We have a, a allowance to do it. We have a liberty. But there are some things that we probably shouldn't do because of our reputation, because of what we give the view we give to other people by that. And I'm not using it. So that was this was that was one that was used for years to give it a reason for why Christians should never go to movies, which I never thought made sense. I'll be honest with you, because they would go into the video stores and rent the movies, and they go to the Christian, you know, they go to the bookstores and buy them. And it never seemed to make sense because it didn't really make sense. And all the, in all reality, that was actually a misinterpretation of the passage. That was they used avoid every appearance of evil, and that isn't what that word. It means avoid every form of evil. In other words, every part of every evil thing in life that we could possibly be affected by, we're to avoid it all. Every form of evil. The fact of the matter is we need to remember what God expects of us. He says we need to hold fast. He need, we need to hold fast to what we've remembered. We need to not forget what God has told us. We need to not forget what He expects of us. We've got a job to do. We really, truly do. And as a church, if we're going to stay alive, we need to remember what job it is we have to do. Our job is, by the way, not to be a social club. And oh, yeah, we can have some really wonderful things. It's, that's not it. Our job is to reach the lost. That's our job. Now, there are things we will do that, you know, are going to be some fun stuff. Because guess what? You can have fun in the Christian life and even with people by doing it. Because guess what? They don't need to think we're a bunch of deadheads. They are to think that. We can have fun. We can do things that are fun. But we need to remember what the true goal is. The true goal is to reach the lost for Christ. That's what we're supposed to be doing. He says, hold on to what you remember. Don't forget. And the last dose of medicine he gives. He says, repent. Turn away from the defections that you have in your life. So the things that you've seen in your own life that border on the dead side. See, the problem with zombies is they're dead. And because of that, you can't kill someone that's already dead. And it's really, if you ever watch these games, it's terrible. I've watched some of these video games. It's terrible that zombies are constantly coming. You can't stop them because they're already dead. Let's not be like that. Let's not be dead and just not know it. Let's be alive. Let's be alive for God. Let's serve Him with our lives and be what He wants us to be. Let's follow the example of challenge, I should say, that was given to the Church of Psalms. See what they needed to do, to find the things that were alive, to sure it up, and to hold on to what was good, and to follow it to the end. Let's do that. Let's look at prayer. Father, I thank you for this day you've given. I thank you for the challenge of your word to us. Lord, help us. Not to fall into the same hole that this church was in. They hadn't realized where they needed to go. And as a result of it, they would fail. Or help us to realize that church can only reflect the character and commitment of its members. When a church is dead, it's because the people are dead. I pray you just help us, Lord, to not fall into that. That's good. Amen. I pray you bless us. <coughs>